Hi, this is Alex. And this is Rivki. And this is a mini DMC powered by Meaningful Minutes. Today, we are talking about staying connected. So we actually put on our stories, you know, asking people, what would you like us to have a mini DMC about? And um, a number of people mentioned this idea of staying connected. Um, The question is staying connected to what? Staying connected to who? Um, What does that mean to you, Rifki? I mean, you know, it's interesting because the my initial thought was staying connected to Hashem, to Yiddishkeit. Mm. That was my... Yeah. But now that you're saying that, I'm like, ooh, but I could have done staying connected to my husband, staying connected to my children, staying connected <laughs> this to is my all community. True. But I'm just going to focus on Hashem. And I think they're all related. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, Because sometimes true. when we do feel connected to our loved ones and we do feel connected to the Jewish community, <laughs> we do feel more connected to Hashem and to Yiddishkeit. That's true. Um, and I didn't want to say, but but the, we it is... Some people mention also, they wanted to hear us talking about like how do we inspire ourselves how do we stay inspired so yes we are talking about staying connected to Yiddish guys so Rivki um could you share with us maybe like times in your life where you felt it you know you felt connected you felt plugged in well I think my my initial answer is probably going to surprise absolutely no one okay which is when when I was in the process of learning about Yiddish kite and when I was in seminary for a year so those are you know basically times in my life I was I was still single I was um working at a job that like it was just a job it wasn't like a passion you know so it didn't it took like zero Mm -hmm. mental energy (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know and I just was at work all day listening to like tapes remember tapes let's have a moment for tapes (laughs) I went to the H um, tape library in St. Louis and I just like would like take out armfuls of like Rabbi Teller Rabbi Krohn Rabbi Heller, Mm -hmm. like Rabbi Orlovsky like anyone wow Rabbi Kellerman and I would just um listen for like eight hours to Torah and then I would go to classes in the evening and I would learn with people and You're then it was like spiritual yeah high. <laughs> it, was, it, it, was. Around the day. it was I remember once I remember once like when I was learning about like Birkos Shachar, I asked um one of my uh, uh a Rebetzin that I was close to at the very beginning of my journey I was like it's just like amazing like you start your day with like this <laughs> intentional like connection to like the most important things in life it just must be so amazing that you start your day every day with like such amazing thoughts <laughs> and to her credit to her credit she was like usually I just kind of mumble them half consciously oh and I remember being like what do you mean <laughs> now <laughs> now I understand but um yeah no it was like I was definitely on like a Judaism high wow. and um and then like being at Neve in Eretz Israel for mm. that I was Baruch Hashem able to do for a whole year mm. which not everyone is able to do when mm-hmm. they become from you know and so that was just like mind-blowingly incredible wow you know so. I just love also you you have that memory and that will always be there and you can always even we can't re- relive that you can like tap into it and remember how it felt how you felt yeah it's, it's part of your consciousness it's well really like beautiful. for sure it was like that's like for a long time then after life got a little bit busier and I wasn't able to learn in the same way that I was then obviously um I was like running on those fumes for a long time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know because you could look at it in a more cynical way and be like why don't they prepare us for real life? Like, no, I'm not going to be sitting and having harusas all the time. And like, this isn't reality. But like, I think a, a beautiful way to view it is instead of being like, no, this can't be reproduced and complain about that because we all know that seminary cannot be reproduced right. nor should it be. Right. Just be like that, that. That was the year that created this beautiful foundation, you know, for you and tap into it. Think, you know, you can, you can't, I don't know. I just yeah tapping into and then it, it, I, I spent many years frustrated. By the way, uh, you know, first year marriage, baby, being like, oh gosh, I am totally ill-equipped to handle real life. I hear that. I, I wish I went to a base Yaakov where they like taught us like this is real life, yeah, you know, versus that. like more of the emphasis on learning and you know that I experience and you know my. Oh, that's my interesting. Journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I think also when you're saying like you know you can't recreate it, I think that that's it's true. You can't ever recreate anything, and mm. I feel like there is. Um, for sure, a tendency to, n- to overly nostalgize, oh, yeah. you know, like, oh, it was so amazing. <laughs> and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. But there were also parts that were hard and difficult and, and all of that, too. Um, and I think that what we could do instead of trying to recreate it is we could also, we could, I'm talking to myself here, you know, and I guess everyone else who's listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, this is our fault for doing these mini DMCs. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> no, but I'm just thinking we could um, take the parts that really worked for us and the parts that we really loved and we could see how we could still integrate them into our lives today. Like what mm-hmm. could we take? What could work? Hmm. You know? Could you give an example? I mean, like for learning about Chavrusa, I think it's a good example. Yeah. You know, something like that. 
Um, or Motaani, like just paying yeah. more attention to that small tefillah. Like you said, that yeah. meant something to you then. That's true. That's true. You could do something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or you could take upon yourself like something like I'm going to learn, you know, Parsha every week or something. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, little things, little, little things. But I'll get more into like what works for me, <laughs> mm-hmm. like a little bit later in the conversation, okay. you know. Can I ask you, you what, like, yeah. have there been moments in real life, like where now all of that is in action and now you are the Jewish woman living, you know, this in this Jewish family, raising a Jewish family that mm-hmm. that you felt connected, whether it was a whiff of that prior connection or a new type of connection in in this life living, you know, living, oh, the, really living the dream, if you will. That's a really good question. I mean, sometimes like I feel like there are. I mean, like with, with with anyone, there's times when I feel more connected and times when I feel less. Mm. Um, bedtime rush. Uh-huh. I typically do not feel so connected. <laughs> but sometimes. But, but, but here's the thing: we're always rushing. That's the problem. I think uh, we're like always rushing. So do true. we ever feel it? But yeah, no. Let's no, hear. No, 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 no. So I was thinking, but I was thinking, like you know, saying Shema with my kids when oh. they're when they're very very small, and I say Shema and then I sing some songs like that. That is something that is very like a very mm. beautiful connection. And I know, and then I have like this kind of out of body experience where like I'm giving them their memory of a Jewish life from mm. like, from a very young age. So like that is very precious. Or like I remember like once sitting in our sukkah and being like, wow, like my kids are going to be like remember like this is my kids' memory of growing up with sukkahs, and like just like having those moments of like wow, like this is like a connection that we're all connecting and just feeling like tremendously grateful. Mm. So in that way. And then every now and again, like sometimes I will, there's a, there is um, a few share my go-to. And I remember there was a Chumash share where like I remember like the, the teacher was saying something and I had remembered some things from my own Chumash classes back in seminary. So like that was also like a nice, like I was like, oh look, it's still there in my brain somewhere. <laughs> So then, well, I love yeah. the idea, like these small moments, you know, like memories, right. and um, yeah, and you don't forget them. You don't. They're them. they're meaningful to you. Exactly. What about what about okay. you? When did you feel super connected? Um, so just in general, um, I think when times are are going well, when things are smooth. I know mm. this is not high level because the high <laughs> level should be when you're in the middle of the nisayon and the the stress and the difficulty. That's when you're meant to reach out to Hashem and those are those opportunities for connection. I, know. <laughs> I, I disagree. I think that yeah. I think that a lot of times people reach out to Hashem in the midst of the tsar and forget in the good times. So I think oh, it's that's good. interesting. I think okay. It's good. For me, I find it just easier when like, you know, like that example of sitting in the sukkah, like your, your blessings are abundant and mm. clear and right in front of you. And it's just easy to feel good good you know yeah. and easy to feel connected yeah. um and those moments also like when i'm feeling gratitude you know whether it's for anything in my life and i just i find that gratitude sort of connects me to my source That's beautiful. but i don't do gratitude journals or anything like that i'm talking about on the whim random emotions or feelings yeah. of gratitude or just contentment that's when i feel connected Very nice. um i also think it's helpful like when i'm feeling personally fulfilled or productive um like I feel like, thank you, Hashem, for, like, enabling me to do work that I enjoy or, you know, I don't know. Like, those, again, I would say it's the same kind of thing. When things are good, I feel, I'm feeling my feel, my blessings. That's when I think I'm feeling closer to Hashem. That's really nice. I really love that. Yeah, I guess uh, so. <laughs> I feel like that's when I take it for granted. So, like, I'm... I'm okay, you see... I'm, I'm getting inspired just by this conversation. This is, like, the point, I think, of, like, conversation is yeah. I think that's my reality. So, I think that's normal. <laughs> You know, yeah. not to say that it's not normal. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think like, oh, doesn't everyone feel this way? Because like, to me, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's just very average for me. But then when you speak to someone else, you're like, oh well, they share a completely different perspective. Yeah. You know, they can see it objectively, which yeah, is always yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, that's the conversations are good. Yeah, it's true. Um, so I guess now we're gonna delve into like the flip side of like when. <sighs> Like, what are some times in our life when we felt really disconnected? Okay, so the obvious, uh, you know, counterpart to what I was saying before is when I'm feeling, you know, when things are going well, that's when I feel connected. When I'm going through something really challenging and then I, the stress is overwhelming, stress robs connection for me. Mm. It's just like, I'm just, you know, fight or flight dealing with whatever the issue like survival is. Survival mode. Survival mode. And, you, you know, the goal is like, that's when you need to like reach up and like grab Hashem's hand. But sometimes I'm just so immersed with the stress. I find that hard. You feel like there's like a lid on the box that you're in that you can't right. even reach your hand I'm not up. even like thinking to lift my hands yeah. up. If I just realize I'll lift up my hand, Hashem will be there to grab me. But I don't even think <laughs> I hear that. just murder and all the, all the chaos. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Okay. I'm glad it's not just me. I'm hoping people who are listening can relate. Um, and also when... Um, I have two more. Yeah. Okay. So another one would be 
if I'm just too busy, not necessarily because things are, just, I'm going through a challenging or stressful moment, just I'm very busy and like, I'm really bad about like remembering to take care of myself or think of myself. I just like get bogged down in everything that I have to do. So just like I may not remember to take care of myself, I also may not remember to take care of myself with my own spirituality, sure. you know? Yeah, <laughs> totally. That just goes by the wayside. Yeah, I hear that. Um, and finally, and I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but like sometimes if I'm going through like a negative b- bout or thinking about something negative about the Chas the community, but like I'm not talking about my local community. I'm not like yeah, global globally, issues. Yeah, no, I, yeah. You know, like especially you if you're on social media, you're reading a lot about global communal issues stuff. in the from world stuff, and you're yeah. reading about a lot of people's pain and trauma and anger. It's heavy. And you may also feel that about certain things, and you know, in the Jewish world and and from kite. But if I ever get like murdered down by that, I don't know if that's a real word, yeah. but bogged down by it, yeah. and, and then my head is just thinking about stuff that's like really negative. Yeah. Like I forget, like, like at the end of the day, like it's Hashem and it's you and it's your relationship with Hashem. And yes, there are there are communal issues that are need to be dealt with and may be really, really troubling and we must act. But sometimes if I just am not even acting, I'm just thinking about them because I'm not the one to make right, the change. Right, it's right. not a healthy state for me and yeah. my relationship with Hashem. I totally see that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's because it just, you just end up getting like sucked into the you vortex. You get sucked into the vortex and it makes it worse. And in a way it's good with social media to a certain extent because you become more sensitive and aware to other people's pain yeah. and, you know, experiences and frustrations which you may never have experienced right, in which, terms which, of... Which you could... Put, yeah, yeah, which is likely that you would not have encountered in right, your day-to-day. Right. right. So there's one hand to be like, okay, I'm going to consume this and I'm going to... Pr- and, and to learn about other people people's experiences that are not my own but um you just have to be careful to not let it really bog you down too much yeah I think that's very fair you know I think that's why you know it is like the I guess the powers that be I don't know not the powers that be but like psychologists on the internet I guess have said you know that you really have you know people should really limit their their social media intake if Mm -hmm. it is negatively affecting Mm -hmm. them you know no doom scrolling stop doom scrolling stop reading the news if it's gonna impede your ability to like affect on a day-to-day basis right. and I remember you know obviously during the beginning of the pandemic and like the first year for sure I remember that was a device that was going around a lot because we were all just like <laughs> right absolutely you know, like what's going on right but um yeah and, and also like with balance. social media that negativity is also often expressed in cynicism and cynicism mm-hmm. will kill all of the goodness in your heart <laughs> we yeah. can all be cynical obviously m- many of us are more prone to cynicism yeah but like like that purity of like Really, your 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 spiritual neshama. Yeah. If you get too like involved in cynicism, it, it kills it. Oh, it's so interesting that you said that because that leads like, literally right yeah. into what I was what, what I was going to say, um, which was that there was a time like my most disconnected time, I guess, was I was hit with a with um, a few interesting nesteonos like not back to back but like pretty close mm-hmm. and like the first one I was like okay this was hard but I made it through uh-huh. and I grew and then like a very similar one came up and I was like what Hashem <laughs> that's enough now I was like I already did this one <laughs> right. I don't what? I don't need a do over that's actually really really challenging it was I was <laughs> I did not respond well initially I was very wow. ang- I was very angry wow. I was very angry and I was like this is nonsense um <laughs> and so it was combined with like I was kind of the the I don't know like I don't know how to say it exactly but there were a lot of like interactions I was having that were also kind of like cynical and also mm. kind of like negative so I had like this personal challenge going on and then I had like kind of this like workplace challenge going mm. on I guess you could call it and um, it just really really like I became very cynical to the sense that like I wouldn't even, I didn't even have a desire to listen to a sheer. Hmm. And if every now and again, like I would be like, oh, I should do it because it's good and da, 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 da. Yeah. And I listen to a sheer and I'd be like, I've heard this. Ugh, so not interested. Right. Like I would listen to a sheer and I would be not only just like unmoved, I would be like disdainful. Mm. And it was really scary. But that's the, the dangerous impact and power of negativity. Right. It's like it seeps into everything. Right, exactly. And I was, I was like, and so for a while I was like, well, it's just just like my Judaism honeymoon over and now oh. I'm like settling into like this is just kind of like the reality. Right. Is this the reality? Like, right. you know, because I the knew the new normal. <laughs> right. Because I knew that I had I had come as a, as an adult to Judaism and I had, you know, I had been very, very inspired and I had been riding this high wave of inspiration for a long time and I was like, well, maybe that's it. Maybe mm. I ran out. Maybe this is life now. Maybe like I'm not meant to be like in the clouds all the time, mm. you know? Um 
and it became in my mind like those people who are able to be inspired and then the, the you mm. know normal people <laughs> right so that was kind of like this um disconnected um vibe and it's interesting as I was like thinking about this and reflecting on it I was like I, I wasn't learning but I was thinking about I was learning I was there were still classes I was going to and there was still a chavrus that I had very regularly so it's interesting that the my ref, my reflection and my memory of this time in my life was so overwhelmingly negative that I even had forgotten that I was still learning. I was hmm. still keeping my in my oar in the in the river yeah, or you whatever. Were trying, I was still. I was trying, yeah. you know. Um, and then Baruch Hashem, like it passed, and I was able. I you know I made a few changes. Like I really kind of reassessed. I guess my my surroundings, my community, who I was spending time with, not not talking about Cleveland, Cleveland's uh-huh, not right, right, right. <laughs> um, but just in general. And I made some changes, and it helped tremendously. Mm-hmm. And then as I ended, that also helped. <laughs> so it was a wave. It sort of sounds like you had to get through it. It, it was. And you it made was a wave. Active effort to change. Right, but well. it was a long wave, uh-huh. and for a long time I didn't make any effort because uh-huh. I didn't. I didn't even think that there was like. Right, you accepted it. It sort of I sounded did. like you just were like, oh, this I, is I had. There. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is just life now. Wow. And you're, you're definitely intense. not there anymore. No. Thank Par- God. <laughs> but I think yeah. it's really important to, you know, we talk about normalizing things, like yeah. to hear that. Because sometimes when you're having those downs where you're just not feeling it, yeah. you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? You know what I mean? Right. And it's, 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 there are these times, we, we've talked about this in prior episodes. Yeah. But it's very normal. There's a time and place for everything and very normal with the ups and downs of, you know, our different life stages, our own. Um, you know, emotional ups and downs to, for that also to impact our feeling of connection to our Judaism. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I guess I'm going to just jump right into now a few of the things that that really, I guess, are working for me. If they, yeah. they could work for anyone else, like that'd be nice too. Um, one of the main things that I was really thinking about was just like how like Baruch Hashem, like, you know, working with Meaningful Minute and like also writing for Family First are mm-hmm. both like such positive environments that it's yeah. like, like all my coworkers are like amazing and everything is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a lot of positive. Um, and you're, you're in the business also of like providing inspirational content, which right. that's going to impact right. you. Right. I, <laughs> right. Exactly. In a positive way. Exactly. Rub off. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and I feel like that's one of the things like, you know, going and like giving classes or making videos. Um, there's learning. Pro- there's a few learning programs I do, um, like through URA and also Partners in Torah, to like give over to other people who are at different places in their own journey and their own connection to Yiddishkeit. And I feel like when I have those like external obligations, if you will, like it gives so much to me. It really, really mm-hmm. helps. And it's like. I know no one has time. No, we don't have time. No one has time. I get it. But like, it's one of those things where it is energizing. And so it, it really, really helps. And it forces me to tap in. It, it's like this external, I, I am one of the people who needs external motivation. Um, Gretchen Rubin wrote a book about habits and she was like, there's mm-hmm. some people who are very intrinsically motivated and some who like need someone from the outside. I need from the outside. Yeah, if I don't have a push. deadline, it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to just write because I feel like it. Right. Um, so that, and then also just really, really, like really learning Torah, like and to understand that it's not enough to run on fumes. Now I don't mean like you know learning inside for three hours a day, but I mean like reading an article, like reading something that's going to be um, inspiring or informative. Like just making time to dive mm-hmm. in, doing these things, even if it's not consistent, even if it's not every day, even if it's not every week, but having it as a priority. You know, and then not beating myself up when it doesn't happen, mm-hmm. but celebrating it when it does happen. I hope that's coherent. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if you could just imagine like you, a plant can't grow without water. Right. And I very much think in our Judaism, like, what are we expecting if we're not <laughs> investing anything in this? It's just like, it's going to it's atrophy. Good. Right. You know, like, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and I, 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 you, I, by the way, I say that in a very comforting way to self comfort myself. Like, no wonder you're not feeling anything, Alex, because like, <laughs> what have you done recently? Well, for your relationship with Hashem and your Judaism. How have you prioritized it? I hear it's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's, it's with everything. Exercise, yes. diet, every relationships, everything. Right. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like what you're saying. Find the things that, you know, water, water your plan, whether it's, <laughs> it's learning something. Um, yeah. 
and um, and giving to others is hugely important. I think that that was like one of the most right. one of the most profoundly impactful things was hmm. giving to others. And there's so many organizations where you can have a chavrusa with someone, and right. like also with chavrusas, it's like a shidduch. So it's like it doesn't always work the first time. Don't right. give up. Right, right. That's that's you know? true. Sometimes schedules don't work. Sometimes personalities right. don't work. But it's like it's worth it. Yeah, I love <laughs> that you do that. Um, for me, I would say um, connecting to other people, but I, I actually am achieving this through listening to podcasts. <laughs> Ooh, yes. yes, I do listen to our podcast. Too. <laughs> oh, is that weird? No. I like to listen to it while I'm yeah, driving. Like, to, so I'm nice. like, I want to hear like our conversation. Yeah, yeah it's like, satisfying. I know it is. By the time they come out, sometimes I forget like what. Yeah, yeah I do. But, I do. Yeah. Okay, but what I mean is, I you know, listening to inspiring people share inspiring stories. I don't want to just say like, oh, this is all fluff. You know, for some people, it's like I don't want to hear stories. You know. Like it's just, yeah, for, but stories are powerful. I, I was always the person who dismissed them. You should just know, like Ooh. I don't want to hear stories. You Ooh. know, I'm not. But I've learned in my old old age how powerful Stop. stories are. <laughs> <laughs> I just became less of a snob. And um, I, honestly, like when I listen to an interview of someone who just overcame a challenge and hear how they came to where they are today, I just find it amazing. Like so it nice. really inspires me. Um, and that has always been in my life, like th- the importance of role models and keeping me connected. Oh, that's so good. So, so these people are role models. Um, I'm not like a, a good Dolan biography kind of person in terms of role models, but I don't know. I, listening to their them speak is great for me. And it's also more candid, you know, because they're interviews. I hear that. And also with friends, you know, and mentors. I like I never underestimate how important that is. I just did an interview last night for a different project interviewing teen change makers okay young well they're early 20s also young change makers these are 22 year olds i'm sitting there i'm like amazed like they're my role models like there are things that they've achieved that were just so inspirational to me so i i i really feel a plug-in when i meet people or talk to people who serve as role models for me that's really nice um staying connected i'm gonna also say just like we've talked about mindfulness. I know I've spoken to about it. I don't think I practice it in like a clinical, like formal way. <laughs> I, I really don't know that much about it. I know a little bit about it. But um, just trying to be more aware um, when I'm doing any kinds of practical ritual, um, yeah. just being aware of the physicality of the doing it. Aww. So like preparing for Shabbos, you know, eating appreciating Shabbos, eating on Shabbos, appreciating Shabbos. Just some examples where just like the more mindful I am about it, the more I start appreciating the gifts I of it. I love that. And that helps me sort of connect into it versus just like the easy trap of just taking it for granted. Oh, that's really, you just inspired me that like next time when I'm making my chicken soup for, for Shabbos this week, I'll say like, like what is it? The Chavos 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 yeah, exactly. Cute. Like the, to have that mindfulness. I always loved that whenever yeah. I read about that or heard it. You know, I don't, kind of I, I think I, I don't say that but it's in my forefront and I'm yeah. talking literally about cutting up the zucchini and just being aware of the smells of the oh, nice. of the senses yeah. of it I'm, like the actual physicality of whatever the ritual is yeah. I just and the action you know I just am trying to be like more aware of what I'm doing I really so love I find that. that to me helpful I, I love that a lot all right, yeah, well, yeah. thank you all for listening in to the CMC about how we stay connected and how we stay inspired. And hopefully we've given you some, you know, food for thought, yeah. um, some examples for our own life, how we do it. Um, and yeah. Yeah. If you have if you have any requests for future mini DMC topics, email us, email us at dmc at meaningfulminute.org. We'll see you next time. All right.